Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back friends, I'm so glad that you're here. Let's celebrate fall together and what better way to kick off fall than to decorate for fall. To have your space and your surrounding feel extra warm and cozy and inviting and a nice reprieve after a long day. You're getting a little sneaky peeky of our bedroom. Um, as you guys know, we've been working on this whole space and house for months and it's taken a long time and I can't wait to share with you the whole of it once it's done but here is what we have going so far this is kind of just our neutral decor um, neutral decor for you know non-seasonal time this is also our library which is one of my favorite hubs of our house and we're gonna decorate that with a little bit of fall decor as well and this is kind of our mud room that bench store shoes the girls backpacks hang on those hooks as well as my purse and bag it's small and cute but it needs to be decorated. So let's start with that. Most of the decorations this year all have been just reused from my past decor. I didn't want to buy a whole bunch of new stuff. Um, there was no need to me and I just used what I had but I thought all of this still came together really cute. Just a nice welcoming and warm cozy place to stop in, put your shoes and hang up your bag. All right, come with me to our bedroom. All of the sheets and the bedding is all from Amazon. We got them when we moved in and I love them. They're so beautiful and comfy and fluffy and they just make me think of light or dark academia and they're really neutral and go with everything. These two large Euro size pillows are from Target this year. These two are pillow covers that are from Amazon that I actually already had but you can still get them. And this brown oblong pillow is just a random find that I stumbled upon at Home Goods this year. I also got this really pretty brown cozy knit throw from Target, but that's about it as far as new decorations go in this room. It still feels really new here for us, and so I didn't feel like I needed to change it up crazy and add a bunch of decor. I love these leaves though. You guys have seen me decorate with them time and time again. I wish I could buy more. I got them years and years and years ago. They're my favorite fall decor item that I have, and so I thought it'd be perfect to hang them on our bed because we have a canopy style bed now. This is my little fall shelves. Um, I show you guys these shelves all the time. We had them in our apartment and we brought them over here. I love to change them out seasonally and you can just see um, how the holidays and the seasons change throughout the year. They're kind of a focal point of my space. I love them so much. Um, they change so dramatically to me by just changing up a couple things from the neutral decor to this fall decor. And they're all pieces I already had, but they make me so happy. And it just really warms up this little space. Um, and I love how it turned out. All right, we're gonna move on to this little dresser of mine that's in the corner of my room. And I just found a couple of extra little pieces that I really like to help kind of balance and warm out this space, warm up this space um, and balance the rest of the fall decor in the room. I have this little gallery wall. It's a picture of my husband and I on our wedding day, some pressed flowers. And then this is a print from Etsy and it actually has lyrics from the song um, Seven by Taylor Swift, which is one of my all time favorites. And then an empty photo frame that I need to fill. I have my my Dead Poet Society tote bag hanging up and this space just feels cozy and warm and just like a nice lovey hug. I love to lay in here and have ambient rooms playing on the background and read books and hang out with my girls and my husband and it is the perfect fall space for me this year. It feels airy and bright but still very cozy and autumnal and I love the like light academia vibes that it invokes. Next we're moving to the library and we're first going to start with the craft. So the main thing I bought this year fall decor wise was a bunch of cheap pumpkins. I also already had a ton from years previous that I just didn't like the colors anymore of and so I bought cheap pumpkins and inexpensive acrylic paint from Walmart and I upcycled old ones I had and the new ones I had I just painted in different burgundies and browns and ochre colors that made me feel warm and cozy and they this was the color palette of the library that I really wanted to have this year. It was really, really easy and it gave me the vibe that I wanted and helped me use things I already previously had and um, be able to create 
and inexpensive little DIYs. You can add flour, which a lot of people do. I've seen on TikTok and Pinterest to make it more of like a terracotta potted kind of faux ceramic terracotta pumpkin. But I just wanted, I liked it matte. I didn't need all the extra fancies. I just wanted to have a bunch of pumpkins to kind of gather in the corner of the room. I also got these full bundle of leaves from Target as well. And again, sticking with that crimson and brown um, shades and this really pretty deep brown ambery glass pumpkin from the Target Dollar Spot that was only a dollar. These were such a steal and I thought they were perfect. They were so so pretty and I love how everything went so well together. Moving on to the mantle which is the star of the show. I have all of these faux um, candles that are all on timers um, that I got from Amazon and then all these uh, candle holders are from Target Dollar Spot and Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby and a couple from Amazon. They're really inexpensive and I just like the kind of flea market mix and matchy kind of like eclectic aesthetic of them all. I think it all came together so beautifully. They're kind of my neutral core that I keep year round. Next I always have books down that I like to decorate with because I think books are so much fun to add to your space and decorate with. I added a couple more that are more appropriate for the holidays and the time of year like Alfred Hitchcock and Agatha Christie and I will alternate that throughout the year based on the season and the holidays. I then took some some of the candlesticks and some of these faux flickery candles and put them down there as well to continue just to add more light and kind of like spookiness and kind of just I don't know this eclectic like gothic-y, vampy kind of aesthetic. I love it. It makes me feel so cozy and at nighttime, which I need to recycle or um, put in new batteries because I use them all the time. As you can see, some of them are a little faint on the glow, but at nighttime, it is so cozy and magical and enchanting in this room. It is wonderful to read a spooky book, book, spooky book next to, and I just love it. This is what happens when you spend three hours trying to decorate a mantle and you forget to film you decorating it. But I just took, again, old books, um, some of those pumpkins I painted, and some of those faux leaf bundles, and I just kind of stuck it and mixed and matched it around the mantle and underneath, and I love how it turned out. I think this area is so cozy and inviting and it just makes me feel like I'm stuck in a dusty library that leaves snuck into and I love it. I added just a few extra pumpkins and a little hedgehog and things I already had in the past to my little bookshelf area and on my record stand and record player I added some leaves and this beautiful amber glaze vase, glass vase from Hobby Lobby and these uh, this pompous grass from Amazon that fit perfectly with my color story um, and again just added more warmth to the space. I then already had these pillow covers, um, these plaid ones from Etsy that I got last year that is like my favorite plaid of all time and then I got these really pretty crimson burgundy ones, velvet ones from Amazon this year but they pick up dust and lint like no other but I still love them. Next, I just set my little coffee table with a little extra fun um, with, again, continually decorating with pumpkins and books and leaves and this giant acorn that was from Hobby Lobby last year. And this space, it just makes me so happy. These books are all um, thrifted. I like to find Reader's Digest and old books from my local library that they have for sale for really inexpensive prices. If you haven't ever watched Darling Desi, you are totally missing out. She is the autumn queen. She makes me so happy. You will love her videos. I will have her channel linked down below. I also really love to make a fall mood board or a Christmas mood board or a summer mood board. It's just such a fun activity to put you in the spirit and get your mind kind of like focused and immerse yourself on things that you enjoy and kind of curating and aesthetically creating the season um, that you want to do. Next, we are also going to decorate just one more thing, and that's my Kindle. I have my Sage Green Kindle um, from Amazon that I just adore, and I got this clear Kindle cover to go over it, and a bunch of stickers from Timu and Amazon and Etsy, and we are going to 
decorate it. Most everything I <laughs> picked this time was Akatar or Taylor Swift and it wasn't particularly autumnal but I thought it still was okay and I wanted to share with you guys different ways that you can kind of change things out too if you like to decorate your things and it makes you feel happy. I know a lot of you guys are bookish girls yourself and this is probably up your alley and this is a good way to save money is shop in those sites. Um, I also have a bunch of different pop sockets that I can change out from time to time and it's just such a fun activity to kind of like decorate your space as if you were in like school again putting stickers on your binders. Okay. All right. So now that we are fully decorated and nice and cozy and we've had some yummy autumn treats to get us feeling definitely autumnal and in the fall spirit, I wanted to share with you guys some other fall favorites of mine to help get you even more into that mood and that vibe and that aesthetic. Um, I'm going to share with you guys some of my favorite books that I read recently slash am planning to read that are still in my TBR um, that are fitting the fall aesthetic um, and vibes. Kind dabbling into the spooky season since it's almost October but mostly mostly fall themed that aren't too spooky or scary quite yet and then I also want to share with you guys um, some movies and shows that I think are severely underrated and I've seen the kind of trend on TikTok and social media as of late to just suggest a lot of uh, movies and shows that are getting the fall spirit. I see Gilmore Girls all the time and Practical Magic and those are both fantastic but if you're looking for something new then I have a list for you to sink your teeth into or sink your little eyeballs into um, to continue on those vibes. Also I will have my fall playlist linked down below. I create one every single year. I'm pretty sure you can follow all of my other past fall ones on Spotify if you're also on Spotify. Um, and this year is no different. I have just kind of elaborated actually the one from last year um, and added to it because mostly I've not gonna lie to you, I've been listening to pretty much Taylor Swift nonstop. So I didn't think that I had enough quite yet to make a new one. So I'm just adding on to the one from last year, but I don't think I got a chance to share that one with you guys quite yet. So um, I will have that linked for you down below if you want to give your little ears a listen to it. And then I'm also going to be sharing you my ambient room playlist down below. Um, I share this with you guys pretty much all the time because it's my favorite thing that I discovered on the internet in the past like five years. I think I started watching these in 2019 and it might have even been in 2018 but that seems really early but I and it was at the very like latest 2019 when I started watching ambient rooms and if you have not had the privilege to um, discover just different ambient room videos. It's all those really beautiful scenic videos here on YouTube that are maybe at a lake or at a pond or at a spooky mansion or in a beautiful ballroom or in a cozy bedroom or at a beautiful Christmas decorated library or f living room or if you are into finding um, worlds and universes that you love to live in. They have so many Harry Potter ones and I mean the list is endless. I have a playlist that I've curated, none of which are anything that I've created, but a playlist that I've curated below um, that is like, I mean like well over, well over a thousand videos. I think that we're honestly approaching 2,000 at this point. I could be wrong though. Um, so there's plenty for you to choose from from all the different seasons, but I love the Halloween ones the best. And so um, I definitely recommend checking it out because there's nothing like sitting down with a cozy cup of coffee or a cozy tea or some yummy fall goodies, reading a book with an ambient room playing on in the background. That is my like, ugh, perfect day. So that's going to be linked down below as well. And without further ado, let's hop into the books. All right. So the first book I want to... Um, 
All right, so the first book that I want to suggest to you guys is The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brienne Randall. This is actually going to be my next read as well. This just arrived a couple days ago. I pre-ordered it off of Amazon. And if you follow any bookstagrams or book talks or in the bookish community at all, I feel like this was a very heavily suggested fall pick, um, at least from all of the ads that I was getting and the... Um, just it being publicized and I was really excited about it because they described it as a cross between Gilmore Girls meets Practical Magic, which is totally up my alley. So if you were looking for something like that, I feel like this will be a good pick for you as well. So far, I think the reviews have been really good. Um, this is Brienne's debut novel, and I just love the cover art. I think it's so stunning. If you are someone who enjoys decorating with books um, and likes to have ones out to match your aesthetic or decorate for the holidays, I feel like this is just a really pretty book to have around. Um, I am terrible at describing books. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. So from, I may bounce around and share some expert, excerpts from different ones or just the backside to describe them for you. But from what I'm guessing, this is about a witch named Sadie who to be able to have her powers, either to inherit them or maintain them, she is cursed to experience four different heartbreaks in her life. Um, and I think that they are not just strictly romantic. I think that they can be platonic as well um, and it's also taking place in a small town um, and she's dealing with the soon-to-be passing of her grandmother who I assume she's very close to um, and just the complicated family ties are involved with that her brother her strange brother comes back into her life and in town um, her first heartbreak and the love of her life the one who got away also comes back into town and it's just the family dynamics of going through grief and loss which I always really obviously if you know anything about me take heart um, with and I love to read books um, with that involved in it and just people having to navigate it and characters navigating it um, and I, I don't know, I think I love a good, I love a good forbidden love trope. So I think this is going to be good. Um, I'm really excited to get down and start reading it. Um, I have a couple other recommendations along the same lines as like a cozy small town, a practical magic vibe books that I'm going to share with you. This also makes me think of the book um, or the show, The Witches of East End. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. It was on Lifetime. It's super cheesy, but also wonderful. It's actually on my list to share with you guys. And this, just the way that there's curses and forbidden loves and complicated family relationships and magic just gives me that kind of vibe. So I'm excited to read this as my next read. Hopefully it's gonna be good. Um, but I wanted to recommend this to you for this because this is a new release and I think that it is going to be pretty popular. A couple of the books that give me similar vibes or just kind of fit that little aesthetic are The Very Secret S Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. That came out last year and I feel like kind of blew up. It has 4.17 stars on Goodreads, which is pretty high um, for a contemporary romance novel. Um, and she's actually coming out with a second book. Um, it's not a series, it's a standalone. Each of them are standalone so far in April and it sounds so cute as well. So I'm excited to read more of her um, books and I really appreciate it if you like want to have more inclusive readings because her main character is a woman of color um, and I yeah I, I like also her cover art again it's just like the cutest stuff this gets me man like I'm gonna pick don't judge a book by its cover but at the same time this is so gosh darn cute I probably already have a picture of it up already for you to see I love these like I don't know like fantastical magical little cozy reads because we still feel like we get to live in like a fantasy element but we also still feel really safe in this like small town cozy vibes okay so moving on to my next read and switching gears to more of a darker kind of fall vibes if you're not looking for really sweet in small town vibes you're looking for something a little bit more dark um this book is called gothicana this is also on my to be read list i've been housing it on my kindle for like a year and a half at this point um and it's it's time to be read now um it is by rue nix and 
It gives me very much Crimson Peak vibes. So if you were a fan of that aesthetic and that movie, I put, is Crimson Peak a book? I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've only ever enjoyed the Tom Hiddleston um, version of that. And that's it. that movie is so beautiful to watch. Just the like aesthetics of it, the cinematography are stunning, the wardrobe, everything about it is so pretty. And this kind of gives me the same type of vibe. It's dark academia, dark romance. Um, so if you are less like the cozy small town vibes and you want more like a, a dark academia, romancy vibes. I feel like this one is up your alley. And I'm going to read the little excerpt here. It says an unusual girl, an enigmatic man, an ancient castle. What could go wrong? An outcast her entire life, Corvinia Klim, is left adrift after losing her mother. When she receives the admission letter from the mysterious University of Varenmore, she accepts it as a sign from the universe. The last thing she expects, though, is an old and secluded castle on the top of a mountain riddled with secrets, deceit, and death. Um, so, I don't, it's, it sounds super Crimson Peak vibes, but if that is something that you have enjoyed in the past, I feel like this one may be for you. So, um, this is 3.97 stars on Goodreads, and I'm excited to dive in. I feel like that's going to be a good transition from my, like, cozy autumn vibes to more my spooky vibes. The next book I want to recommend is called The Dead Romantics by Ashley po Poston. I read this um, in early spring and I had a hard copy and I don't know where it is. I might have put it in the little libraries um, around town. I can't remember where it is. But um, it is perfect for this time of year, especially as we transition into more spooky times. It's not scary by any means, but there are some ghosts involved. Basically, this book is about a girl named Flo, who is a ghost writer for a very well-known author. Um, and she is kind of stuck in her career because she also really just wants to be an independent writer herself. Um, and is kind of in the, like, the slumps. Um, of life and she gets an unfortunate call that her father's passed away and so she has to return home to her small town where her family owned the town's funeral parlor. So it's very much Six Feet Under vibes if you ever enjoyed that show or watched that show um, but with a twist because her infuriatingly handsome boss happens to also pass away and suddenly um, and he winds up back next to her um, when she gets home from her small town and it's basically trying to solve why he's there, what his unfinished business is, and also figure out um, what Florence wants to do with the rest of her life and how um, she can work through and process this grief. And again, I am very much someone who enjoys books that deal with grief because it helps kind of like process my own grief in my life. Um, and sometimes there are thoughts that are put together that I just, they're just really comforting and things I never thought of. And so I love reading books like it. It's kind of sad sometimes, don't get me wrong, but I do enjoy them. So I highly recommend this one. This one was a very highly rated one. Everyone that I saw read it really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it's perfect for this time of year. It's spooky in a slight, very cozy way. It's not very spooky, but there are ghosts involved and um, it's sweet and I don't know, I really enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend that if you're into kind of like a um, paranormal romance. Okay, the last book I am going to recommend to you is another more like creepier version. If you love a whodunit, murder mystery, um, think Knives Out vibe, then this one is definitely for you. I'm sure that some of you already know and have read this before. It is a classic for a reason, but that is Agatha Christie and then There Were None. Now, pretty much any of Agatha Christie's her her I can never say her Perot because I cannot say his first name to save my life. Um, Hercule, <laughs> no, Perot. Um, any of his detective mysteries are totally worth it. I enjoy all of them. There have now already been two movies um, that have been made off of these books. Um, and there's a third one that's just about to come out. I want to say next month or in November, which I'm absolutely seeing because I love 
this series but and then there were none where it was my absolute favorite one I read this in like I think eighth grade and we had to hunt this little sucker down um, because they at the time were not like reprinting um, the novels and so we my dad and I like hunted all over the city for this book for my class um, this one was published in the year, the year I was born, 1991, so it is definitely aged, but I've kept it with me all these years. I love it, um, and it's a thin book. It's fun to read. It's kind of spooky and creepy, um, but it's not too scary. If you like a good murder mystery, this one, this one's it for you, and then there were none. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to shows and movies. The first one I'm gonna recommend is Anne with an E. If you have never seen that show, it is on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. It's based on the Anne of Green Gables series. And it is one of the most beautifully done, beautifully shot, filmed, directed, composed, like acted. It is such just beautiful it is so so pretty um i actually started watching it in this past spring and didn't realize i was missing out on it for so long i had so many people recommend what, me watching it and i just was like yeah yeah i'll get to it and i put it on and it just it makes you feel so good and it's just it's whimsical and enchanting because of the way that Anne views the world um, it just makes you happy. The shots, the cinematography are stunning. The music is so beautiful. It is absolutely worth your time. It feels just like a warm hug and it is perfectly autumn. So I highly recommend watching it if you haven't already. Um, it is appropriate for all ages and my husband was even like enthralled with it, um, which just says something because he is not a man of the classics. And also I think a lot of people think that would be not the most like exciting show, but it's just, it's so beautiful. I just, I cannot recommend it enough if you've never seen it. The next uh, show I wanna recommend is Felicity. Now this came out in the 90s and I watched this for the first time when I moved away for college on my own that fall and it changed my life. <laughs> It's really dramatic, but I just loved it. I feel like it is very much a coming-of-age show um, It was the perfect time for me to watch it because Felicity the main character who is portrayed by Carrie Russell Goes off to NYU for the first time and leaves her home and everything she knows and it's just her growing up and finishing and going through school and figuring out what she wants to do with her life and the mishaps and the friendships and the romances along the way and I I just love it. If you love like 90s fashion and especially fall fashion which is everything that is like popular right now and in with clothes this is the show that is just going to inspire you all the more. The chunky sweaters and the plaid flannels and the mini skirts and tights. Like this is the show to be inspired by. I mean it takes place in autumn. Well not only in autumn but the beginning is autumn in New York City. So um, I feel like New York City, autumn in New York is just quintessential for like more of the urban-y fall lovers. Um, and so I highly recommend it. It was on Netflix, but I wanna say it's now moved to maybe Hulu. It's definitely on a streaming platform. I just can't remember which one, um, but it's wonderful if you've never seen it. And there are gonna be some people who pop in there that you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is where they were and they're little young babies. There's so many fun guest stars. I highly recommend it. Felicity definitely does some stuff that is just so incredibly internally cringy sometimes and I'm wondering why the heck she makes these decisions and you just kind of want to look away and like look between your fingers because you just like feel so much secondhand embarrassment but it's still so good and I just love that it kind of plays off that like naivete like young girl who's experiencing world the world for the first time but man sometimes the scenes are hard to watch because you're like why why are you doing that um but definitely recommend it so good so good all right i already said this one but the witches of east end from lifetime which i know is either on paramount or peacock it is definitely on a streaming network as well i just can't remember which one <laughs> is so good um it is kind of cheesy but in the best possible way and it just feels like a little bit of a it gives definitely practical magic vibes and gilmore girls vibes i would just say like i just feel like it is this book in a show um so i'm very excited to rewatch that i haven't watched that since i was pregnant with my oldest and boy, I was like addicted for so long. I highly recommend it. It's so fun and just like witchy and magical, but not spooky scary and perfect for this time of year. 
All right, moving on to the movie section, I'm gonna share with you a couple of them that I have that I, I just are what I imagine when I think of fall and things that get me the most inspired that I haven't seen recommended super a whole bunch, <laughs> super a lot, a whole bunch. First one is Knives Out. I already kind of referenced that with and then there were none. Um, well, any honestly like Murder on the Orient Express is great, Death in the Nile, they're not particularly folly, but they're kind of spooky murder mystery, but Knives Out is absolutely autumnal. The colors, the just vibes of the characters, the whole whodunit mystery story, I love it. If you've never seen it, it is on Netflix, I believe now. They had a second one called The Glass Onion come out. It is not nearly as good to me as the first movie. There's a ton of um, well-known actors in it and actresses. It is fantastic. Daniel Craig um, is plays the lead detective in it, detective, um, hired private investigator, and he is fantastic. I love his acting in this movie. Chris Evans is in it, Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, oh my gosh, you just, you just have to watch it. You will not be disappointed if you've never seen it before. It is so good and perfect for this time of year. The next movie I want to talk about is Dan in Real Life. Now, I want to say I've already shared this movie with you guys before, but I might not have. This is a movie that I feel like no one ever knows about, and it's actually so incredibly good. I love this movie. It is, um, I think this came out in like the mid 2000s around there, maybe late, like 2010, 2000, um, but the lead actor in this is Steve Carell, and this was one of the first, if not the first, dramatic roles I ever saw him play, and he is such an incredible actor and is so dynamic. He does such a phenomenal job in this movie. Um, there are so many other actors and actresses, again, that are in this film. It is so good. It is about a recently widowed father, widower? Steve Carell lost his wife, um, unfortunately. I think she passed away from cancer, if I'm correct. And he has two, three um, daughters that he's trying to figure out how to raise, two of which are teenagers, and they're giving him a run for his money. Um, and he is invited up to his family's um, like lake house, essentially. And it's just a big family. I don't think it is during Thanksgiving, but it definitely feels like they're having a big Thanksgiving meal. But I could be wrong. It could be Thanksgiving. It is absolutely taking place in autumn. I just can't remember why he's going up there. But um, they're just like cozy autumn knits and sweaters and the foliage. It is so beautiful. It's definitely up north. Um, and I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it before, you will not be disappointed. It is so, so good. Um, and it's just cozy and sweet and lovely. And if you haven't seen it, guys, you got it, you got it. Okay, the last two movies I'm gonna share with you. The first one is a actually based on a book that is one of my all-time favorite books, and I actually, this is one of my all-time favorite movies because it was so well done, um, and that is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. The book is originally The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Um, it is actually, I believe, a banned book um, in high schools and stuff now, but it is wonderful. Um, it is heartbreaking, it is beautiful, and I, it is a hard, I'm not trying to make it sound super happy, it's not, this, this particular movie, if you choose to watch it as a movie or read the book, is not going to necessarily leave you feeling like super happy, warm, fuzzy, but if you want something that is just going to hit your heart and make you feel something and make you feel alive and just like, ugh, it, it touches me like no other, man. Um, I read this book in high school and I have loved it ever since. Um, and this movie actually has Logan Lerman in it. He plays Charlie and he does an incredible job. Emma Watson is also in it. Nina Jo Brev is randomly in it. Um, she plays Charlie's sister. And there's a bunch of other actors and actresses again in this. Oh, Mae Whitman, who is one of my all-time favorites. She is also in this movie. Um, and it is so beautiful. The soundtrack is absolutely incredible. Again, the cinematography and the, just the aesthetics of this film are just so quintessentially fall for me. Um, they have a Rocky Horror Picture Show um, couple of scenes. But for me, that is definitely, that's an all-year-round thing. But for us... 
Um, that is something that I used to participate in college and I would do it around fall time. So it just cinches that to me and I feel like majority of the times in this movie you see them wearing coats and jackets and it's winter and Christmas time and it just is like the perfect like colder weather season movie. Um, I love it. If you've never seen it, it is so good and it's one of my all time faves. So definitely watch it. And the last one is one that I never hear anybody talk about either and that is Mona Lisa Smile with Julia Roberts, Kristen Dunst, um, Julia Stiles, Oh my gosh, the list can keep going. It is, that one is so beautiful. It takes place in the 1950s and Julia Roberts is an art history teacher and she gets hired on at Wesley, I think, I believe college um, for girls and she is kind of out of her element and she helps open up these very, very um, affluent and privileged and smart intelligent women to their power and their capabilities and opens up their mind to art and just um the world outside of this like kind of small perspective um and very much a women's expect expectations during that time of what was expected to them in the 1950s and it is incredible so um again if you've never seen it <laughs> It is so good and um, Julie Roberts is fantastic in it. It just is very much that dark academic, I wouldn't say even dark, just academic, college, lifestyle, um, so or aesthetic. So if that's more up your alley, then totally check that one out as well. I believe that is all that I wanted to share with you, books and movies and shows. And don't worry because next month we will also have another vlog for decorating for Halloween. I wanted to make sure I shared both of these videos though because I know some of you aren't necessarily into spooky things or into Halloween, but you really like to decorate for fall or you want to just watch fall movies or listen, you know, what have you. But then there are some of you who are absolutely just love, 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 love Halloween and that is what you're most excited about. And so I wanted to give you both versions. So we're gonna have a fall one, which is this one, and then a Halloween one that's coming up really soon as well. And my next video should also be my boo buckets. So not only will I be sharing what I got for both of my girls, I'm also gonna be sharing what I got for their three teachers. Um, my husband and my mom. So we're gonna have lots of different variety and ideas, all of which should be able to come really quickly for you because I got everything really quickly because I was running behind. But I'm excited to share the ideas because they're really cute. And I believe that's it. So definitely keep an eye out, again, like I said, for the playlist down below that you will find some tracks that will just make your heart pitter patter and feel super, super autumnal and cozy, as well as to go give that um, ambient room playlist a follow and a like, um, or a like, I don't know, enjoy it. I don't get any, that, I, well, support the creators who worked super hard to make all of those videos. I just curated the playlist. I got nothing for it, but if you want to be inspired and find cozy rooms, that's the playlist for you because I have way too many on there. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you have um, some fun, cozy fall inspiration. Um, got some ideas of new books to read and movies to watch. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye guys.